to keep your home equity line of credit from freezing. Okay, this is a major question regarding does Velocity Banking work in a crisis? So the simple answer is yes, it works. Okay, for people who are aware, understand, know how to operate, know the rules, they have the banking products already in advance, Velocity Banking works for them. For people who do not have good credit, low income, no cash flow, uh, you don't know your four major numbers, Velocity Banking isn't even supposed to be in your radar just yet. You're supposed to be doing the pregame work. You're supposed to be positioning yourself for the concept itself. Okay. But now regarding the tools, because that's what the main thing is, how do the tools work? Okay. And here's an article I found on Market Watch, and let me just go ahead and copy that. And then I'll post it like in the comments. I'll post it in the chat. But you guys can just type in, you know, keep your home equity line of credit from freezing. So let me just go through, I'm just gonna read it, the important stuff. All right. And the question comes, you know, I have a shrunken home equity line of credit with a big bank, keyword right there. That's a big bank on the property which I reside. What is the best strategy, if any, if any, to minimize the possibility that the HELOC will be frozen or closed? So he also says, currently I have the line tapped to the max. Keyword, right? Key information, tapped to the max. That's a problem. So problem number one, before we even go into this, and I say this often, people who do not use their debt tools properly are the first ones to get knocked out, are the first ones to be victimized when the banks restrict, when the banks uh, confine, freeze, hold, or limit you, is if we borrow more than what we should. So if we over leverage ourselves, obviously the bank is going to say, hmm, I don't know, Denzel has a $50,000 HELOC with a 10-year draw period, and he's got the whole thing maxed out, something wrong. Uh-oh, we got this global pandemic. So the bank's gonna say, you know what, we're just gonna, we're just gonna restrict Denzel from using that HELOC for a temporary period of time. It may not be forever, but temporary period of time, we're gonna restrict him. And that could be deadly if I'm doing velocity banking, obviously, right? If I'm dumping all my income in, and then all of a sudden they freeze me up. Well, guess what? All my freaking income's in there. How do I access it? You don't. Okay. So that could be an issue of, you know, someone uh, attempting to do velocity banking. They don't know the rules and they make a mistake. So they say currently I have the line tapped to the max minus breathing room for the minimum payment of interest only. That's another problem. There you go. Interest only payment. Another reason why I don't really care to have my students, my clients, go with an interest-only HELOC. I would rather you have a principal and interest-only payment, principal and interest payment. Now, I understand that the interest on an interest-only HELOC and the interest on a principal and interest and the HELOC are very similar in cost or probably the same, right? But I love the idea of disciplining my clients where they do not try to take advantage or over leverage themselves. So by putting in that principal factor, it's like no matter what, I'm always hitting that debt. No matter what, I'm always, you know, knocking down the debt itself. So I don't want to open too much risk, okay? So with the funds and interest bearing account, while I prefer to pay it off, I would hate for the account to be shut down on me. As far as I can tell, my condo is right at the 80% loan to value mark. Okay. So that's another, I would say, red flag is whatever he has in equity on that HELOC is probably the like all the way up to the equity max on the property. So if I've got you know, a first position mortgage and I have 20% equity available and I strip all of that out in the form of a HELOC, 
there's no extra space there. So it's kind of like he's back to where he originally started. He's got the freaking mortgage and the HELOC all maxed out. There's no equity room. So we don't do that in velocity banking. Usually when I have my clients get a HELOC, if they have, say, uh, uh, say we have a $300,000 property and I owe 250000 on it, and the property is worth 350000 So that means there's $100,000 of equity. Almost all of the time when I'm working with my clients, I do not tell them to get a $100,000 HELOC. I say, listen, if you're only making five grand a month, I only need 20000 I only need 30000 I don't need that much to do velocity banking. So I leave all that space, all that equity space, in the event a crisis hits, the real estate market crashes, and say my property value drops by 50K. So it went from 350 valued, now it's down to 350, and I've got a 20K HELOC, I still have 30,000 of equity space. I do not see a scenario where that person would get their HELOC frozen especially if I'm using the HELOC to pay down the first position mortgage. So every time I make a chunk from a HELOC, every time I take money out of the HELOC, it's not to redo my kitchen. It's not to redo my floors or fix the roof. It's to pay off debt. So all I did was shift from one area to another and saved a bunch of money on interest. My credit score went up. Right, and my and I have a cash flow gain. So we're creating all this, you know, um, room, all this space. So let's keep going. Let's see. If the market took another big hit, obviously the LTV would go higher and set off alarms. Yes, we know that. I'm currently breaking even after tax on the interest, interest out, but the terms are phenomenal versus terms on new lines of credits. What do banks do if your line of credit is tapped to the max and they want? To shut the line down, do you continue to pay interest only, or do they usually call the whole balance due and payable? And if you do not have the money, charge you a ripoff rate. I am reluctant, so the the person's even scared of asking the lender because they the the lender didn't do anything yet, right? So I'm a, so he's saying I'm reluctant to ask the lender. This is as I think it is smarter to let sleeping dogs lie. Any insight would be appreciated. Okay, so answer. I checked, with, I checked with several major home equity lenders, none of whom wanted to be quoted directly, but here's what I found out off the record. For starters, as long as you are current on your payments, lenders cannot demand that you pay down your balance, even if you are fully drawn, so you have nothing to worry about there. Okay, so as long as I'm up to date, on my payments and I'm not being a clown, right? And, and, and uh, whatchamacallit, you know, being irresponsible with paying my debts, don't have a problem there. Now, all lenders have to abide by their contracts with borrowers and home equity lenders are no different. They can only take action that is allowed in the loan documents. That in the case of home equity lines of credit, are typically tailored in accordance with Regulation Z. I don't know what that is, but maybe we could do some research on that. The Federal Truth in Lending Law. So read your papers carefully. In other words, like Denzel says, read between the lino, okay? Read between the lines when you are applying for a home equity line of credit, a personal line of credit, a credit card. Know your terms and agreements. Read the manual, read the terms so that you know what's going on. Okay, let me see if there's any other good details here. Uh, so it says we go by the contract. One lender told me banks only take action that is in the HELOC contract with the customer. When a bank does take an action such as the one year fear, the contract typically allows the customer to continue to have an interest only option through the remaining interest only period of the loan. This is generally 10 years, but again, check your contract for specifics. 
at the end of the interest only period, borrowers are required to repay what they owe. There you go. So another part of velocity banking. If I am a person that's doing velocity banking, looking to do velocity banking, I have a home equity line of credit in the second position, uh, not the first, but in the second position, and I have a draw period, or what this person's saying, interest only period, he's referring to usually the first five to 10 years of the HELOC. Usually a HELOC is a 20 year term on average, okay? where the first 10 years, it's revolving. So in those 10 years is the only time I can do velocity banking. If I say come across Denzel Rodriguez and velocity banking and I had a HELOC in place revolving second position, I'm in my seventh year, I've had the HELOC for seven years, that means I only got three years left to do velocity banking on that specific HELOC. So that means that, you know, I either have to renegotiate my terms with the HELOC or get a brand new debt tool. Okay. That's very, very important stuff to know. All right. And just forgive me here. I'm trying to play with my camera again to see if it can make it work. Um, so let's continue. HELOC contracts usually don't have rate increases associated with them. A customer typically keeps his interest rate through the termination of the loan. That's pretty accurate, although there are some HELOCs I've seen where the bank holds the right to increase your HELOC interest rate um, at any given time, I, I believe, uh, but they can only go up by so much per year, and it's usually tied to a specific uh, um, bond or something like that. I forget how it works, but it has to do with the market trend and the interest rates and the feds and yada, yada. So it has to do with that. Being delinquent is one situation that permits lenders to freeze a HELOC. So that goes back to not paying your bills, but you say you are current. So you have no danger there. A 50% decline. Here we go. This is, this is key stuff. A 50% de decline in equity from the time to customer took out the loan could also allow the bank to freeze the account. Again, no danger, at least for now. As long as your loan to value ratio doesn't spike, you are good to go. So that could be a danger, which is another reason why when I'm guiding my clients, I don't tell them to grab all the equity out of the home. No reason to, okay? For example, I have a client making over 20,000 a month, uh, his home is worth over uh, 1.2 million or something like that. He owes around 900k on it, and we only have a HELOC for 67,000 bucks. Okay, and I think he recently increased it to 100k. Again, I don't need all that equity when I'm doing velocity banking. So even if the equity in that guy's home decreased by 50%, we would still have space in there because we're never really borrowing more than what we need. That is the, that's, that's the key. Now, I know there are probably other velocity banking people out there that might do things differently, but I'm, you know, I'm a blend between Dave Ramsey and Grant Cardone. Right? I'm like a blend. I'm conservative. I'm frugal. I'm also a minimalist. You know, I, I don't spend what I don't need. So that's that Dave Ramsey thinking but I'm also willing to 10X and take massive risk. So that's where the Grant Cardone mindset comes into mind. And then I bring it right in the middle and try to create a balance for my clients, okay? So let's continue along. Finally, if your account is frozen for some reason and the situation improves, you can get back on track with your payments or the value recovers. It is possible to have your draw privileges reinstated, which is a good thing in case it got bad in case the bank actually did freeze my account because I was being a clown with my debt tool. But you'll have to provide proof in the case of increased property values that usually requires a new appraisal by an appraiser of the lender's choosing. Hope that covers all your basis. And I don't think, I think it goes into other stuff there. Talking about cash and refinancing, but 
let's go to another article that I had. So, can a bank cancel my HELOC? So, we went over freezing. Um, I think it's the same terminology, if I'm not mistaken. Cancel, freeze, hold, restrict. Okay. So, this is a new article. Uh, like I said, I'll... I'll get the links and I'll copy paste it into the chat or I'll just comment below when the video is over. I'll just attach these things so you guys have them. But obviously, if you're a client already, you've already seen this information way in advance. Um, and it's and it's it's in the I put it in the oh, there you go. Join my fi velocity banking family uh, Facebook group. I believe I posted it in there as well because this is public information. Okay, so it's not the same. There we go. So you may be confusing the difference between canceling a HELOC and freezing a HELOC. With When a HELOC is in good standing, a bank can generally cancel it only when it is at a zero balance. Interesting. That reminds me of when I do not use my credit cards for a prolonged period of time. For example, Macy's. Um, I had like... I think 6,000 plus in credit limit and they recently lowered my credit limit because I wasn't using the thing. So I have seen credit cards lower my credit limits before and I also know that if for a prolonged, I want to say maybe three years, that you do not use a credit card, eventually they will just close it because of due to inactivity. So that is a reason why a bank would cancel my debt tools if I'm not using the thing. So really that's not going to apply to us velocity banking people because we're constantly using this thing like crazy. Okay. A bank can cancel a HELOC to protect itself from exposure to a future loss. Very true. When you obtain your HELOC, the size of the credit line was linked to the value of your home. If the value, if the value of your property has dropped, which has happened quite a lot in many parts of the country, the bank becomes concerned that it will not be repaid for the loan. Should you default on the loan by canceling the HELOC, the issuer prevents you from running up a debt you are unable to pay. They may not be able to collect. In your case, I believe the worst case scenario you face is that having your HELOC frozen because you are making payments as agreed, they cannot cancel the HELOC or demand that you pay off the balance immediately. They can, however, freeze the line of credit, preventing you from making additional use of the equity line. So being frozen is what would scare velocity banking people uh, or people that are, are doing the concept, preventing you from making additional use of the equity line. If your HELOC is frozen, you must continue to pay, it, pay on it as agreed. Once the balance is paid off, the bank can cancel the HELOC readjust the maximum balance that you can carry on it or reinstate it. If you're ever if you ever shopping for a HELOC, it's a good idea to read, a, a read a, all about home equity line of credit loans. Very, very important. You mentioned a separate issue in your question regarding a problem you have with Bank of America. You can certainly have the right to withhold payment for them, but by doing so, you can have serious negative effects. You may find yourself subjected to penalties, interest, and stratospheric whoa stratospheric rise in the internet rate interest rate on your account as well as serious damage to your credit rating it is rarely wise to take unilateral action as you've done regardless of how angry you are yes yeah, so i would not recommend uh, uh trying to fight the banks that's basically what he's getting at so those are uh two interesting articles that i found mm -hmm.